Welcome, my name is Mark Johnston and I do STEM education. Today I'm going to revisit one of my most popular videos, the Dynamic Castle Crasher. And I recorded the first one about 38 weeks ago, uh, about nine, a little more than nine months. And so this baby is ready to be born into something new. Uh, so after nine months of working with VEX VR and really uh, learning all the different ways to do things, I think this is gonna be a good update. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. The guidance subsystem uses deviations to generate corrective commands to drive the missile from a position where it is to a position where it isn't and arriving at a position where it wasn't, it now is. All right, here we are on vr.vex.com, and you can see I already clicked on Playground up here and have the Playground loaded. And so there's a few little things that have changed since the uh, nine months ago video. Uh, the red border here is a little bit wider, and so it's less likely for the robot to fall off. The uh, there's a timer here. Uh, we got some new buttons up here. I, I believe we can do Python code now where we couldn't before. Uh, so quite a bit. I'm just going to stick to the code and the, my solution for this. And I've thought a lot about it, about making it a little bit more complex, maybe uh, about really trying to get the amount of time that it takes down. Um, and ultimately, I just decided let's keep it uh, simple and uh, let me show you about how that's gonna work. First thing I do is I set the drive velocity and the turn velocity to 100%. We wanna uh, make sure that this robot is able to clear stuff off quickly. Then I'm going to set basically a, a safety, kind of safety net for myself. I know that I want this to repeat over and over, so I'll need a forward. Uh, and then my safety net I'm gonna say repeat until, I'm gonna say repeat until my robot's down eye sees red. So if I go to sensing and then select, it says uh, front eye detects red, but I'm gonna say down eye detects red. And so I'm imagining my robot's driving around here trying to push stuff off and then it hits red. What, what At that point, what do I want it to do? Well, I want it to get to safety, right? So I want it to back up. So I'm gonna say reverse. Notice that I'm putting it out below the repeat until because I want it to repeat its actions, its main actions while it's not seeing red. So it's gonna repeat until it sees red and then jump out and do this. So I want it to reverse for 200 is good. And then I want it to turn right for a specified number of degrees. Now I found that if you always have it turn right for 90 or for 30, you can end up getting kind of stuck in a corner. And so to uh, solve that, what I did was I selected the random operator and you put random in here. And then if you put 30 degrees to say 70 degrees, what it's gonna do is it's going to back up and then turn right for anywhere from 30 to 70 degrees, which is going to help add some randomness to it, help make sure it doesn't get stuck somewhere. All right, so at this point, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the middle part. Okay, the middle part is uh, I want it to drive forward if it sees an object. That's it. But what do I want it to do if it doesn't see an object? Well, if it doesn't see an object, I want it to turn right. And that's it. So that's a simple if else, right? So I'll go to control and grab if else. And then sensing. If distance found an object, then I want it to drive forward. And that's going to make it uh, just drive and push the thing right off the, the edge, all right? If it doesn't see an object, I want it to turn right so that it does see an object. Now, don't go away, okay? You might think, okay, that's the code and I got it and I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna show you a couple more things that we can do to improve this. 
Um, actually, three more things that we can do to improve this. But let's go ahead and run it and see how it does. Okay, so notice how it's not pushing the blocks off of the, the edge there. That's because it's when it's detecting red, it's, it's, it's getting out. It's like, peace out, I'm gone. So what I want it to do actually is not just a reverse. I actually want it to, um, I want it to go forward and, and check this out. When you're testing, I can just push stop. You don't have to push reset. When you push stop and then I push play again, it's going to run the new code that I've made. So I'm going to take this uh, drive here and I'm going to say drive forward. And I don't want to drive forward for 200. I'll definitely fall off the edge. But if I drive forward for about 80, I should be okay. So now let's go ahead and push play. Now notice when it hits the red, it does go deeper into the red a little bit. And that, there you go, is just good enough to get it to push the object out of the, off the playground. All right, I have a couple more little added features that we can add to make this work a little bit better. Let's go ahead and let this finish. Okay, there we are. Now, I don't know about you, but when it's done, I, I want it to be done. I want the program to stop. I, I don't want to have to click stop on my own. So that comes in um, in a minute. Uh, first thing, I, I want it to push a little bit better. Um, and I noticed that as it's going, if it loses sight of the object, it starts to turn right, which is fine. Um, but if it really loses sight of the object, then it turns really right. Now, the good thing is that it'll be pressing, there's those left and right bumpers. If it turns right, it'll be pressing on that left bumper. So if it's pressing on that left bumper, I actually want it to turn left. Watch, let me show you how that works. So again, in this if else right here, it's in the if area. So if it sees an object, then I want it to, and actually if it sees an object or if the left bumper is pressed. So go to the operators and say, or, and I'm gonna put the distance found object, or the left bumper is pressed right here. And then I'll place that there. That way it will drive forward if the left bumper is pressed, but it's not actually seeing anything. So the vision sensor ends up not seeing anything but the left bumper is pressed, so it will still drive forward. I'm gonna go a step further. I'm gonna grab an if and put it right here. And then I'm gonna say if, I'll duplicate this guy. If the left bumper is pressed, I'm gonna duplicate that guy, I'm gonna turn left. Now I'll go ahead and reset. Notice what happens, and I'll try to get a good view here with this guy. Notice how it's turning left, it's wiggling back and forth. That's getting it to push it a little bit more straight. And it doesn't work too good with that cylinder, but with these boxes, it works really good. So look at the times when it's turning clockwise, or yeah, when it's turning counterclockwise. When it's turning counterclockwise, that's when the whole button is pressed, turn left is working, so just like that. All right, so there we are. That was way faster than the first time. It could just be the randomness of the map, but I just feel like it's not abandoning the piece and turning off to the right to continue on uh, too soon. Last thing I want to do is when the robot has is done, right? If it spins around twice and doesn't see anything, I'm going to say that it's done. And notice rotation right now is... 8,000 degrees. Uh, if I reset, rotation is zero, and as it turns, it adds up. So once it's turned all the way around, it'll be 360. Um, the good thing is that I can reset that. So if I go under drivetrain, I can set the 
drive rotation to zero. Um, and so I'll just put that over here because I know I'm going to need it here in a minute. Um, and so I don't need to create my own variable for this. I can just use the variable that's already there, the drive rotation in degrees. And what I'll do is I'll introduce another if statement down here. And so I'm repeating until I see red. And then what happens is it'll turn either be going forward or left, and then it'll be turning right. And actually, I put this right here, because as it's turning right, I want it to check the value of drive rotation in degrees. So I'm going to say if the drive rotation in degrees is greater than 720 degrees, which would be two complete turns. So if it's greater than 720, go to sensing and say, drive rotation in degrees, drive rotation in degrees greater than 720, then I am going to end the program. So that's in orange here, and this wasn't even available back when I recorded the first video nine months ago. So I'll say end project. If I were to do that right now, and you know, I didn't even notice while I was talking, the robot fell off the edge, oh my goodness, okay. So if I, if I were to do this right now, uh, it would definitely end the program before we were done with everything. Notice that I'm already up to 186 degrees, and here very shortly, it'll end up having made almost a full loop, 304. And let's just watch what happens once it gets up to 720. There you go. It stopped the program. So what I want it to do though, is I only want it to do that if it turns for 720 without seeing anything. So if it sees something, drive rotation in degrees needs to reset to zero. Um, so basically I'll just put this drive, set drive rotation to zero degrees right after it sees an object. I have, or left bumpers pressed, but if left bumpers pressed, then it's definitely seeing an object. So I'm fine with that. Now I'll go ahead and reset and push play. And now watch what happens to this drive rotation here. Notice that it's always going back to zero. Let's let this go ahead and clear the field and then let's watch what happens once it gets to uh, like 720 after having cleared everything off. All right, let's see what happens here. Hits 720 and it stops the program. Uh, that one was a little bit rough, took about almost three minutes for it to complete. But this program here, I think is uh, the evolution or the iteration of nine months of working with VEX VR and really trying to figure out how to use blocks the best that I can. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did like that video, please give me a like and consider subscribing. If you want to become a member, you can click the join button. For just two bucks a month, you can get access to most of my videos a full day before everybody else. I really appreciate you guys and have a good one.